Intelsat Corporation, formerly Intel SAT, Intelsat, Intelsat, is a communications satellite services provider. Originally formed as International Telecommunications Satellite Organization (ITSO) or Intelsat, it was from 1964 to 2001 an intergovernmental consortium owning and managing a constellation of communications satellites providing international broadcast services. As of March 2011, Intelsat operates a fleet of 52 communications satellites, which is one of the world's largest fleet of commercial satellites. They claim to serve around 1,500 customers and employ a staff of approximately 1,100 people. History John F. Kennedy instigated the creation of Intelsat with his speech to the United Nations on 25 September 1961. Less than a year later, John F. Kennedy signed the Communications Satellite Act of 1962. Intelsat was originally formed as International Telecommunications Satellite Organization and operated from 1964 to 2001 as an intergovernmental consortium owning and managing a constellation of communications satellites providing international broadcast services. In 2001, the international satellite market was fully commercialized, and the U.S. predominant role in Intelsat was fully privatized after 2001 as Intelsat was formed up as a private Luxembourg corporation. <laughs> international governmental organization, 1964–2001 The International Governmental Organization EGO began on 20 August 1964, with seven participating countries. The 1964 agreement was an interim arrangement on a path to a more permanent agreement. The Permanent International Organization was established in 1973, following inter-nation negotiations from 1969 to 1971. The most difficult issue to Resolve concerned the shift from management of the system by a national entity to management by the international organization itself. On the 6th of April 1965, INTELSAT's first satellite, the Intelsat I, nicknamed Early Bird, was placed in geostationary orbit above the Atlantic Ocean by a Delta D rocket. In 1973, the name was changed and there were 81 signatories. Intelsat was "...governed initially by two international agreements, the agreement setting forth the basic provisions and principles and structure of the organization, signed by the governments through their foreign ministries, and an operating agreement setting forth more detailed financial and technical provisions and signed by the governments or their designated telecommunications entities." In most cases the latter are the ministries of communications of the party countries, but in the case of the United States, was the Communications Satellite Corporation a private corporation established by federal legislation to represent the U.S. in international governance for the global communication satellite system. Intelsat at that time directly owned and managed a global communications satellite system, and structurally consisted of three parts. The Assembly of Parties—meeting every two years and concerned with aspects, primarily of interest to the parties as sovereign states, with each country having one vote. The Meeting of Signatories—meeting annually and composed of all the signatories to the operating agreement—primarily working on financial, technical and program matters, with each country's signatory having one vote. A board of governors, meeting at least four times each year, making decisions on design, development, establishment, operation and maintenance of the in-space assets, appointed by signatories, but weighted to each signatory's investment share. In the space assets, the 1973 agreement called for a seven-year transition from national to international management, but continued until 1976 to carve out 
technical and operational management of the system to the US signatory the communications satellite corporation which had also served as the manager of the global system under the interim arrangements in force from 1964 to 1973 Later phases of the transition resulted in full international governance by 1980. Financial contribution to the organization, its so-called investment share, was strictly proportional to each member's use of the system, determined annually, and this corresponded to the weighted vote each would have on the Board of Governors. Intelsat provides service to over 600 Earth stations in more than 149 countries, territories, and dependencies. By 2001, Intelsat had over 100 members. It was also this year that Intelsat privatized and changed its name to Intelsat. Since its inception, Intelsat has used several versions blocks of its dedicated Intelsat satellites. Intelsat completes each block of spacecraft independently, leading to a variety of contractors over the years. Intelsat's largest spacecraft supplier is Space Systems, Laurel, having built 31 spacecraft as of 2003, or nearly half of the fleet. The network in its early years was not as robust as it is now. A failure of the Atlantic satellite in the spring of 1969 threatened to stop the Apollo 11 mission. A replacement satellite went into a bad orbit and could not be recovered in time. NASA had to resort to using undersea cable telephone circuits to bring Apollo's communications to NASA during the mission. During the Apollo 11 moonwalk, the moon was over the Pacific Ocean, and so other antennas were used, as well as Intelsat 3, which was in geostationary orbit over the Pacific. Topic. Commercialization By the 1990s, building and launching satellites was no longer exclusively a government domain and as country-specific telecommunication systems were privatized, several private satellite operators arose to meet the growing demand. In the U.S., satellite operators such as Panamsat, Orion Communications, Columbia Communications, Iridium, Globalstar, TRW and others formed under the umbrella of the Alliance for Competitive International Satellite Services to press for an end to the IGOs and the monopoly position of COMSAT the U.S. signatory to Intelsat and Inmarsat. In March 2001, the U.S. Congress passed the Open Market Reorganization for the Betterment of International Telecommunications Orbit Act to privatize COMSAT and reform the role of the international organizations. In April 1998, to address U.S. government concerns about market power, Intelsat's senior management spun off five of its older satellites to a private Dutch entity, New Skies Satellites, which became a direct competitor to Intelsat. To avert the U.S. government's interference with Intelsat, Intelsat's senior management unsuccessfully considered relocating the ego to another country. <laughs> Privatization On 18 July 2001, Intelsat became a private company, 37 years after formation. Prior to Intelsat's privatization in 2001, ownership and investment in Intelsat measured in shares was distributed among Intelsat members according to their use of services. Investment shares determined each member's percentage of the total contribution needed to finance capital expenditures. The organization's primary source of revenue was satellite usage fees which, after deduction of operating costs, was redistributed to Intelsat members in proportion to their shares as repayment of capital and compensation for use of capital. Satellite services were available to any organization, both Intelsat members and non-members, and all users paid the same rates. Today, the number of Intelsat satellites, as well as ocean-spanning fiber optic lines, allows rapid rerouting of traffic when one satellite fails. Modern satellites are more robust, lasting longer with much larger capacity. Intelsat Americas 7, known formerly as Telstar 7 and now known as Galaxy 27, experienced a several-day power failure on the 29th of November 2004. The satellite returned to service with reduced capacity. 
Intelsat was sold for US$3.1 billion in January 2005 to four private equity firms, Madison Dearborn Partners, Apex Partners, Permira and Apollo Global Management. The company acquired Panamsat on 3 July 2006, and is now the world's largest provider of fixed satellite services, operating a fleet of 52 satellites in prime orbital locations. In June 2007 BC Partners announced they had acquired 76% of Intelsat for about €3.75 billion. Euros. BC Partners has since sold all their share and Intelsat is a standalone company. <laughs> Intelsat SA. Luxembourg In April 2013, the renamed Intelsat SA undertook an initial public offering on the New York Stock Exchange, raising a net $550 million USD, of which $492 million was paid immediately to reduce outstanding company debts of $15.9 billion USD. In May, the company announced it would be purchasing four new high-performance Boeing Epoching 702 MP satellites. There were talks that Intelsat was to merge with SoftBank-backed OneWeb. However, on 1 June 2017 it was announced that the bondholders would not accept the offer and the merger would be terminated as of 2 June 2017. In 2015 Intelsat reincorporated in Delaware and became Intelsat Corporation. <laughs> Operations Intelsat maintains its corporate headquarters in Luxembourg, with a majority of staff and satellite functions. Administrative headquarters is located at the Intelsat Corporation offices in Tysons Corner, Virginia. A highly international business, Intelsat sources the majority of its revenue from non-U.S. located customers. Intelsat's biggest teleport is the Teleport Fuchstart in Germany. Topic. In space refueling demonstration project As of March 2011, Intelsat has agreed to purchase one half of the 2,000 kg 4, propellant payload that an MDA Corporation spacecraft satellite servicing demonstration project would take to geostationary orbit. Catching up in orbit with four or five Intelsat communication satellites, a fuel load of 200 kg of fuel delivered to each satellite would add somewhere between two and four years of additional service life. A near-end-of-life Intelsat satellite will be moved to a graveyard orbit 200 to 300 km to 190 miles above the geostationary belt where the refueling will be done, without consequence. To the Intelsat business, as of March 2010, the business model was still evolving. MDA could ask customers to pay per kilogram of fuel successfully added to each satellite, with the per kilogram price being a function of the additional revenue the operator can expect to generate from the spacecraft's extended operational life. The plan is that the fuel depot vehicle would maneuver to several satellites, dock at the target satellite's apogee kick motor, remove a small part of the target spacecraft's thermal protection blanket, connect to a fuel pressure line and deliver the propellant. MDA officials estimate the docking maneuver would take the communications satellite out of service for about 20 minutes. Satellites. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Renaming On February 1, 2007, Intelsat changed the names of 16 of its satellites formerly known under the Intelsat Americas and Panamsat brands to Galaxy and Intelsat, respectively. Topic. Satellite list Satellite coverage map HTML. Topic. Launch vehicles Over time, Intelsat has worked with most of the commercial launch services providers worldwide. 
Their satellites are often among the most massive of their generation, requiring the most powerful and reliable rockets on the market at a given time. In the 21st century, most Intelsat missions were conducted by Arianespace with the European Ariane 4 and Ariane 5 launches, and by ILS with Proton-K and Proton-M rockets manufactured by Khrunichev in Russia. Intelsat also took advantage of the Equatorial Sea Launch offering with Zenit 3SL rockets launched from the Ocean Odyssey floating platform, until they suspended operations in 2014. On May 30, 2012, Intelsat signed a contract with SpaceX for one of the first Falcon Heavy launch vehicles, marking the return of Intelsat to American launches after many flights on Atlas II in the 1990s and a single Atlas V launch in 2009. Topic. See also COMSAT Utilsat Inmarsat Intelsat 708 Intelsat Americas Intersputnik Cez S. A.